What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out all you great decoders around the world, wherever you may be. My name is Logan and this of course is Decode Your Reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding Pandora's box. That's right. We're going to be breaking down the 666, the box that we all live in called the game of life. This is Pandora's box decoded and a great artist rendition from the website Deviant or Deviant Art, Amy Hunter. And I just added the 666 because that's exactly what we're all living inside of is the great beast. The beast below the box, Pandora's box. And I have a gem filled, jam packed presentation. So as I encouraged you in the beginning, slip on a pair of headphones, get fully immersed. Just kind of let this whole presentation bring you in and really observe the code. What I'm about to show you folks is going to blow your mind. If you want to know what this reality is all about, well, you've come to the right place in the right decode. Pandora's box decoded. Here we go, folks. Let's get into the topics of conversation. Trying to keep this simple. Uh, only three categories. And in the zero position, it's the intro, which is kind of what you saw. You know, my little graphic -y intro of the box and the little laughter and because the, the box is definitely feminine, gives life to all things. And the whole story about Pandora's box, if you go study the Greek mythology, it has to do with Zeus and, uh, and Prometheus and Epimetheus. And I would encourage you to go look at that. Number one, the topic is called the box. We're going to just talk about the box, break it up. And number two is who owns the box? Pandora. Pan, as in Japan, the land of the rising sun. So the god Pan has something to do with it. Number three, the ruler. What runs the box? <laughs> and then number four, I always love to hear what you saw during this presentation. So keep your comments coming in the comment section below. Thanks everybody for your subscriptions, your Patreons, your donations. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this one. I spent a lot of time uh, creating this one. So really enjoy this one. This one was a lot of fun. So let's get into the very first topic, the box, the box that we live in. And I want to start off with a bang here. And, you know, obviously the movie Hellraiser was all about the gnarly things that are inside the box, the deep, dark, gritty stuff that most people just would never even want to, uh, you know, experience myself included. But you know, it has to do with the television box. And, you know, lo and behold, the movie Poltergeist, a classic movie by Steven Spielberg, 
is the same match in numerology as the words Pandora's box. So what is this telling us? Well, the television screen is a fractal down. Yes, we live inside of a box or we live in a movie. We live in a simulation, but a fractal down is the television screen. And of course, a lot of magic comes out of that box, a lot of indoctrination, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought this was absolutely mind blowing just right here with the 45 connection. So let's really break down this Pandora's box and the box itself. Obviously, it's a number 45, which I have shown so many times beyond just the poltergeist here, but uh, how many links to this 45. And many of you great decoders have showed this as well. But when you say the words 45 through numerology keeping in the same Chaldean family, notice what the outcome is 42. And that leads us to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Douglas and the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything is Pandora's box. That's right. We live inside Pandora's box, which is 42, which 42, of course, can be tied to the symbol of Jupiter. Are we in Jupiter's box? Are we in Saturn's box? Well, I think they are in cahoots, however that looks. But the 42 is a big deal. And of course, 42 is reduced down to the six, which is tied to the pineal gland and the lucid dreaming and the simulation. And we're going to get into that. So what about this word right here? Reincarnation is the number 42. I actually have a decode I did on the number 42. Many people say that's their favorite decode. I had a lot of fun doing that one. The words reincarnation, the words wonderland, the ones, the words crucifixion, they all equal the number 42. The words lucid dreaming equals the number 42. Are we just in the lucid dream of the cosmos? Is the cosmos just dreaming all of this? And are we just daydreaming when we're awake? Well, it's tied to the simulation and I'm going to be getting into that with Jason from Archaics this coming week. So we have this Pandora's box being the number four. Well, I four, sorry, the, the box is the number 14. We're going to break down this box itself. And I thought this was really interesting. The classic uh, movie by Tarantino, Pulp Fiction and, you know, them carrying, you know, Jules carrying around Samuel Jackson, carrying around the briefcase and they never show you what's inside, but it is gold colored. And this is rather interesting because if you take mathematics and bring this into the equation and you tie it into numerology, you see what is 14 squared? Well, if you just get out your calculators and you take 14 and multiply it by itself, you're going to get the number 196. And there you go. Bam. It's the element gold. And this, this is all about lead to gold. And I'm going to show you the lead because it's going to be in this presentation. And it has to do with Pandora's box, lead to gold. It's the exchange of currency as we're all down here inside the box. And I thought this was pretty interesting. How about the tech capital of the world? The tech capital of the world is called Silicon Valley, where they make computer parts. It's where all the big giants, Apple, and and it's the number 42. How about that? 42. And the word box being 14 is tied to this element called silicon, which is why I'm showing you the Silicon Valley. So the box is technology, obviously. It's going to contain artificial, everything inside this reality, inside this simulation is going to be part of Pandora's box. Everything is inside the box. And Silicon is tied to Silicon Valley and technology is what moves us forward. It moves us into the future. And this Silicon, the most abundant weight is 27. It's average is 28. I'm going to show you that the 27 is tied to this word right here called currency because that's what we're being used for in this box. As you live out your life and your experiences, it's all about what kind of currency do you have? Not money. Money is currency. Of course, it's a fractal down, but it's your energy. The energy that you give off through your emotions of love and fear. And technology is going to be in there with the Silicon Valley and the 42. So what about this number 14 tied to the box? Again, I have it highlighted right here. Well, it's very special number because it's not only tied to pi 3.14, but it's also tied to the number 43 because 43 is the 14th prime number. We get into real, I love prime numbers 
because they're very special standalone numbers. They're very powerful, like the leaders on the mathematical board. And 43 is the 14th prime. And then we bring in, of course, some more mystical art platforms to describe the narrative, give us pictures. We think in pictures. Yes, it's going to break down mathematically to numbers, but let's get some images of what this Pandora's box is all about. And we bring in the almighty tarot and the 43rd card in the deck of the tarot. I'm using the fool as card zero and 22. There's many ways to observe the tarot, but using the fool in the zero and the 22nd position, which is a classical way of looking at it, it puts the seven of cups at the 40 third position let me just be really crystal clear here are the cards of the tarot and here's the 43rd card in the deck and again using the fool as 0 and 22 if you want these graphics by the way just send me an email decoderreality at gmail.com and i'll send them to you but nonetheless it's the seven of cups and this card is all about choices illusions illusions and day dreaming think about that word day dreaming you're dreaming during the day you're having a lucid dream part of the simulation and this 43rd card is tied to the 14 and tied to the box and then when you bring in the medicine cards the cards that use 52 insects animals reptiles etc etc these cards were created in 1988 by a few individuals from the native american heritage and they use the the the, in, the um, insects, animals, and reptiles, and all that kind of stuff. And it's the mighty spider card, the forty third card in the deck, and it's the spider spinning its web, which of course is where you're going to get the World Wide Web, the WWW, the Triple Crown. All these things will fit in this narrative, but all inside the Pandora's box. It's inescapable. But these cards, they show their their expressions of how this reality works. So we know that the box has got a lot of illusion. It's about daydreaming, choices, of course. That's what the Seven of Cups is. And then the spider casting its web. And, you know, you ain't getting out till you die. And what about the actual straight up 14th card in the tarot? It's the major arcana card called the temperance card. This is the angel that is the great angel of balance. The great angel of balance. That's what this card means. Tied to Pi 3.14. The box. The box is all about yin and yang. The box, Pandora's box, is a blend of duality. We live in duality called Pandora's box. It's the good and evil. The antagonist, protagonist. Hot, cold, up and down, left and right. That's what we live in. And this, this card right here tells you it's the balancing of both of those. And being in the very middle is going to give you the very best expressions in life or experiences in life. What about the cards of illumination? We showed you the tarot and the medicine cards, but what about the 52 cards that predated the cards called the tarot? These cards of illumination from my research came first and the tarot came after. But these are very, very important. 52 cards matching the 52 weeks, four suits, four seasons, and... You have some of these attached to your life and your birthday. But here is the 43rd card in the deck. It's the four of spades card. The four of spades card. Notice it's pointing upwards. This logo is pointing upwards. The hearts is going to point downward. This is tied to earth. And then fire and the hearts are pointing to, uh, the hearts are pointing to fire coming down. But the 43rd card in the deck is the four of spades. And when you match that up with the tarot, it's the four of spades swords card number 54 and how very fitting because this is more of the uh narration of lucid dreaming this card right here is all about sleeping rest think about what i'm showing you here the box are we living inside of a lucid dream of whatever's running this reality and we wake up we're daydreaming think about that word daydreaming i mean it's sleep here you know, daydreaming and it's card 54. 54 is tied to the element Xenon, which means the stranger in your head. That's right, because the voice in your head, that owns you. I know some of you aren't going to to tolerate that. You think you're in control of your life. I'm not here to take that away from you, but I got more to show you. So let's keep going. 54 tied to Xenon, tied to mang manganese as well, which is the great magnet. But here is the 14th card pairing up with the 43rd card since 43 is the 14th prime number and we're talking about the box being 14 it's the ace of clubs 
It's the 14th card in the deck and the 43rd card. So these pair up being the 43 being the 14th prime number. And when you go to numerology and you type in ace of clubs and then the four of spades, you're going to get the number 103 making up the box found from the 14. And then that's a match to the 26 letters in our English alphabet. Bam, right there, the 103. How about that? So the ace of clubs and the four of spades found from these two cards, found from the 43 being the 14th prime number, found from the origination of all this, it's Pandora's box. It's the 14, remember 3.14, but it's the 103 matching the 26 letters that we use to speak the English language. And when you take this 103, just to show you how powerful Chaldean is, is the 103 is the 27th prime number. And when we go to numerology again, and we type in Chaldean, you get the number 27. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Chaldean 27 tied to the 103. It's right there. This is why I feel Chaldean is the best cipher to use to decode from. Not saying the other ones don't have merit, but you can see how powerful the Chaldean is. I'm not even moving away from the Chaldean at this point. I do have a few others that I'm gonna be using, but nonetheless, you can see the power tied to the cards, tied to the primes, tied to alchemy, not the other not the other layers, not the other numerology ciphers, not directly as this right here. So the box is tied to our language, tied to currency. Remember 27 is tied to the word currency. So it's all very in, it's all in there. It's all in there. So let's really get into some mathematics with this number 14. Let's bring it into the string of pi, which is what we all make up of. Our fear and love emotions. Pi is the perfect circle. We live on the perfect circle. It's called Earth, Pandora's box. And look at where the 14 appears. Right in the very beginning, bam, right after the three point, it's one four. That's where it starts. So the box is telling you, I mean, you can't get any more clear than that that the, the box is right there, right after the, the decimal, past the three point. It's, it's right there, you can't miss it. Digit number one and digit number two, which is gonna give you the number 12, which is gonna give you the hangman, and there's a lot of other syncs that we can do with this. What about the mathematical precision of the string of the golden ratio? Now we talk about, we get the Fibonacci sequence in here, some more pure mathematics. Well, the 14 appears at digit 254 and 255. You're like, well, where do we go with that? Well, you just add them up and you 254 and 255 is gonna give you the number 509. And that's another prime number, not just anyone. It's the 97th prime number. This is also tied to Brachilium. And uh, that, that we can go off at another branch there, but 97 is tied to this element right here called molybdenum and molybdenum means lead it comes from the greek word molybdos meaning lead so the box is remember it's lead to gold folks and you can see this is all the source code playing out right here all of it this is all source code written before we ever got here think about someone programming software or writing something those of you that are html coders you have certain specific parameters you have to write and codes and this this is our source code right here numbers and elements, the Elohim, the elements, it's pretty crystal clear. And there's the most abundant weight of molybdenum. Its average is 95, tied to the I am, but 97 is its most abundant. And there you go. You go right back to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and being the number 42 and tied to Silicon Valley and tied to Jupiter and tied to the future. And the future and the, is tied to the present and the present's tied to the past. And they all couple together and past, present, and future. Matter of fact, those three words equal gold. It's led to gold, folks. That's what we live inside of. And there's no way escaping it until you die. And we don't know what happens after that. So let's break down the word box and the 14 and see what we can come up with to get a little bit more of a detailed narration of how this reality works. We know the box is run by God. And then we have to say, okay, well, what is God? Or who is God? Are there many gods or is it just one and it rules everything? Well, if you go to Isaiah 45, verses 7, I mean, Pandora's box equals 45, Isaiah 45, verses 7. I mean, if you just go to that, let's just go to that really quickly and just do some improv right here. And let's just type in Isaiah 45, verses 7. And here it is right here. And it's 45. 
verses 7. And it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. It's the yin-yang right here. I do all these things. You can have different variations of the spelling. Some Bibles are going to say I create calamity, but it doesn't matter. It's saying it's both. It forms both. And it's Isaiah 45. And Pandora's box is 45. How about that? It's right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's right there showing you the source code, tying it now into another layer called theology. I mean, you can't miss this stuff once you have the eyes to see it. So what's running the box? Well, it says the God of the Bible's running the box, according to Isaiah 45, verses 7. Pretty crystal clear. But there's the G-O-D, and there's some other words that are tied to the 14. How about the word time? That's right, because in Pandora's box, we only have, a such, we only have so much time here in the box. Is one day you're going to pass on. And then what happens after that? Well, that's up for debate. But I do know that right now you're on a selected period of time, just like I am. You only have so much time. And that's where you're going to get in the devil. You're going to get Satan the devil running time, of course, because time is your enemy. And over time, folks, you will start to sin. When you're a baby and you come out pure, there is no, there is no blemishes. You need to get programmed by time in the box and as you get programmed you will start to sin it's inevitable you can't help it and that's where you're going to get the devil we are the devil folks you're the devil you just got to be the best little devil you can be is there some time lord working behind the scenes running all of us i don't know i certainly have never met this person or this entity and i certainly don't know if it even exists other than just the idea of it existing but i know time exists because i look at my clock and i see it ticking Even though some people say time is an illusion, it's not an illusion when I look at my clock and I see it moving. So time is a real construct. It's just there is really no such thing as time when you realize that the box is never ending. It's eternal, this Pandora's box. And you're going to get that tied to the the Tesseract and the Avengers movie. And it's all there with the box. But notice as well that Satan is pi itself. It's 3.1415. I mean, you can't get any more clear than that. And we live on pi, the perfect circle. That's called earth. And that's where you're going to get the story of theology saying the devil runs earth. Because it's time. Time decays everything. It's pretty easy. It's inevitable. Time decays every single thing. That's alive, that is. That's alive, that is. So how about the planet Kronos, otherwise known as Saturn? What, What is Saturn? Saturn, of course, is really close to Satan. A lot of people think Saturn is Satan. Saturn, the revered planet in the Jewish uh, mystical platforms, the Old Testament, Saturn-based, Kronos, Father Time. And ruling over time, you know, you go back to this and right there, I mean, the God of time. Kronos is where we get chronographic watches from. So you can just see the the connections to this running Pandora's box, maybe. Well, I mean, 14 is going to reduce down to the number five. Those of you that like to reduce down, And the number five, I mean, look at where it's at in, this is Saturn's magic square, by the way. But look at where the number five is, right in the dead center, the bullseye. It's collecting all the energy. If I put a pyramid over the top of this, the number five is going to be at the capstone, the pinnacle, the apex. And it's the 258, which is the middle pillar of your calculator. If you get out your dial pad or your phone, you'll you'll see the number 0852 is the middle pillar. That represents Earth and the androgynous way of life that we all live out. And is Saturn really the ruler and maker of time? This celestial body, is it really the ruler and maker of the box? Does it run the box? You only have so much time. I mean, it's tied to the Shemitah and tied to the harvest. All those words, they all tie, they link back to Jesus. I'm sorry, they link back to uh, Saturn and and Jupiter. They most certainly do. So this uh, number five here is interesting because it's tied to the box. When you reduce down the one and four, give you the five. But when we say five, it's going to give us the number 20. And that number 20 is really interesting because it's going to be linked to these two words right here that are very important in our reality. Number one, it's duality, which is what we're all living out in Pandora's box. And when you're born into this world, you have a birthday and you're born into this world on your birthday, birthing you into the box. And when you look at the birthday and you start to break this down, it starts to make a lot more sense. And when you bring pure mathematics into the number 20 in birthday, all of us have these, the solar return, if you're a fan of astrology. 
but you put it into the string of pi, pure mathematics again, and look at where the number 20 appears at the 53 and 54th decimal digits of pi. That's going to give you the number 107. 107 is the 28th prime number tied to Lucifer. But nonetheless, when we go to numberempire.com, the 53 is not just any number. It's the 16th freaking prime number, which is going to link to these two big words in our language. Once called hell, 16, and the first man ever created. It's not a man, folks. It's, it's the Adam, and Adams are in light. So then you get Lucifer, the light bringer. Adam is 16. And when we're born into this game called life, pin Pandora's box, we're born into hell because Pandora's box is all about the suffering. And it's the atoms slowing down through the photons and becoming matter. And we're born and we have a birthday. That This is how all this stuff works. It's really easy to see it inside the simulation. Without the atoms, there is no simulation, by the way. But how very fitting that this stuff right here. And then, you know, when you take five and you use the English and you say it, you're going to go right back to the comical 40 freaking two. How about that? Right to the 42, right to Silicon Valley. Five is man. You have five fingers, five toes. It's, it's us, folks. We are the man. And it's the pentagram, the five-sided polygonal. And that represents mankind. And I'm going to be getting into some astrology to show that to you just here in a minute. But what about the sun? Because the sun is a direct match to the word box in its total, 14. Notice the word sun is 365 as in 365 days on the Gregorian calendar. And those of you that think the Gregorian calendar is evil, like, oh, well, they changed it. Folks, everything is controlled by the same source, the same source code. So it just gets bored. Like, oh, I don't like the Coptic calendar. Oh, I don't like the Hebrew calendar. I'm going to change it to the Gregorian calendar. Folks, this is all archetypes just changing the calendar, and they all are going to link together. It doesn't matter. The word soul is 13. You got 13 and 14. These numbers are going to encroach. They're going to bleed into one another. And you can see how numbers just pair up in the string of pi and compound numbers and all that kind of stuff. But here we get into astrology now. Now we bring in another layer into from the source code. If you're a fan of astrology, this is really important, and it deals with your fifth house. Those of you that are Leos, born in the month of August, primarily, it's tied to the sun. Your ruler in your house of Leo is the sun. That's right. So the box, it has a lot to do with the sun, and the sun has a lot to do with the simulation. They both start with the letter S, sun, simulation. And then pi is in there. But the Leo is the 15, which the word, uh, the devil card is the 15th card in, in the tarot. So, I mean, the, le the lion is all about the king of the jungle. The pre it's an apex predator. Think about that. And then you, the, those of you that are theology fans, 1 Peter 5 verses 8 says, Your adversary walks about like a roaring lion seeking to devour someone. That's right. It's your ego, folks. And, you know, when you bring in... Saturn's magic square. <clears throat> Each one of these rows adds up to the number 15. And there it is. And it's in the very middle. Five is in the very middle. I know this is going to reduce down to the number six tied to Virgo, and, but it's, it's the fifth house. So these are going to bleed into one another. But there it is. And, you know, in the Chinese, the fifth house is the dragon. And the dragon's got that S wave. It's the sun, folks. The most revered animal in Chinese is the dragon, which is the fifth house in Chinese, which is tied to Leo the lion, which is the king of the jungle. It's tied to our ego. That's right. There it is. Leo is 15. Our ego is 15. And notice that the numbers are exactly shared. They're just not in the same order. It's the five, the three, and the seven. Right there in the Leo and the ego. It's our ego. It's our. That's why lions are known to be part of the pride. It's being prideful, which is going to get back to the devil again, because the devil is boasting and prideful and selfish, and you're going to get into all these constructs and theology. And it just comes down to you being the devil, folks. You have an ego. It's your dragon inside of you. It's your primal. And that's the kundalini that sits at the bottom, and your job is to raise it up. Raise it up. You don't want to stay down in the pits of hell. You want to raise it up. 
You want to get above the heart. Get to the third eye. Start to study this information. You can see the all these constructs are part of the inside Pandora's box, and it's it's Saturn's magic square. So does Saturn run the box? Well, I, I, I mean, it can go so many different ways, but it's there telling us somewhat of the story. But there it is. It's, you know, and what's in your fifth house? You got to look at that. Do you have any, you have Chiron there? Do you have any wounds there? You know, what kind of planets, kind of energy? You know, it can be very daunting, very rewarding. Just, you got to check it out. But let's now get into Pandora. We did, that was the box. <laughs> you were having fun yet? I'm getting really animated. I'm using I'm my, my zany self. Some people just don't like, I get too loud and crazy. I get excited. I'm super passionate about this stuff. I love creating. So let's get into Pandora. Pan, the Greek god Pan. Japan, the land of the rising sun. Probably where it all started. Our blood types tied to Japan. But anyway, let's get into uh, the breakdown of Pandora and where it originated from. It originated from Greek mythology. And I would really encourage you to really read about Pandora and the story about it, because it has a lot to do with the celestial outside of our reality called Earth, okay? And in the Greek mythology, Pandora is spelled this way right here. Now, there are several ways to break this down. This is using the uh, Greek ordinal. You can also use the finalized version of the Greek, which is going to be a little bit of a different narration. Derek doesn't have this on the website. I hope he's going to include it someday, but I think it's going to give you a 76, which is Osmi and the Wizard of Oz. But if you're using it this way, it's the number 82, which is very fitting because Pandora is the box. And remember, I, show, I told you we showed gold with Pulp Fiction and how that 14 squared is... 196 tied to the box. Well, here is the lead to gold because that's what Pandora's box is all about. Lead to gold, the exchange of energetic currency. And that number 207 is really important as well. And if we take the Greek, uh, the Greek and we reduce it down, this is the full breakdown of all the numbers. But if we reduce them down, here's the P reduced down from the one and seven equaling the number eight. This is called the Greek reduction. We get the flip flop. We get the mirror of the 82. It's the 28. And that's going to link us to Lucifer. And I think this is where you're going to get Venus in all of this. The goddess of love. Because the, the box is feminine. Earth is feminine. Earth is not masculine. By, by its dominant trait, it's feminine. It gives life to things. And Lucifer fits in this some way, some shape, somehow. Uh, 28 is the second perfect number. Uh, you know, I mean, there's so many ways to look at this, but I mean, look at the connections and then you got to make a determination on what you want to believe because there are many ways you can branch off with this, but clearly keeping it in Chaldean with the origination of the Greek, it's the 28 and Pandora is the 28. Lucifer's 28, Pandora and the original spelling all the way down, reduced down as 28. And then we bring in another layer to get another variation, another addition of how we perhaps perceive this reality. It goes back to the sun because it's old Saint Nick. This element called nickel has 28 protons matching Pandora, matching Lucifer and matching Pandora in the Greek spelling the origination of it and nickel is the number five right you guys in the u.s you spend your money well there's a five cent piece it's called the nickel it's called the nickel i broke this down in my superstar part three how it would eat even the buffalo nickel and how ridiculously coded and scripted this reality is and there it is it's nickel and the 28 tied to lucifer and pandora and the sun has a lot to do with this without the sun there's no simulation is Lucifer the sun? That's the big question. A lot of people think it's Venus, but is it the sun? Well, the nickel means the sun. It's old Saint Nick. It come, means devil's copper is what nickel means if you study that element. And then we get into prison planet. I've got a series on these. There's three of them. Please check those out. So I most watch videos telling you that you're in a prison planet. It's tied to Pandora's box. That's the prison. And you ain't getting out till you die. And how I know the connecting points make that so is because Pandora from the original Greek, the original letters and the numbers, it's going to give you the 82 in lead. And when you bring that into the string of pi, notice where the 82 appears at the 52nd 
decimal digit, 52 and 53. And if you add those up, you're going to get 105, which is going to lead to what the Masons call God, the great architect of the universe. That's 105. Keeping us in the prison planet, which is all about magnetism and electricity. Magnetic and electric is 26, matching prison planet. But there's the 52. And those of you that are, you know, flat earthers, please don't leave a comment that I don't get it or uh, uh, what am I doing showing the globe. This is just for illustration just because you know what it means, okay? So just please don't hassle me on this. This is just an illustration, all right? So you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there's the connecting point of Pandora's box being the prison planet. You can clearly see, and that's exactly what we live inside of, folks. You live inside of a magnetic and electric universe on the dielectric plane, and you ain't getting out till you die, and then we don't know what happens after that. What about Pandora being 28? Now, we, you know, Pandora's is 31, Pandora's box is 45, but what about just bringing Pandora down to a single version of the spelling, and it's the 28, which was tied to Lucifer, but here's where the theology comes into all this, and then how we can bring theology into alchemy. Notice, you know, theology, alchemy, they all end with the letter Y. It's really interesting. The letter Y being the 25th letter. But nonetheless, it's silicon. I show, I mean, the tech capital of the world, Pandora's box, who's responsible for the technology? Well, technology is known as artificial intelligence, which just means man-made. It just means man-made. What's running that? And then you get into the average now. I showed the most abundant in silicon. It's 27. But the average is 28. These have several different, they're called isotopes. And 14 and 28. And, you know, I thought this was really fitting because in the book of Isaiah, the only scripture in the Old Testament, the only one of its kind is the only mention of Lucifer, which is Isaiah 14 verses 12. And 14 and 12 is 26, and that's tied to iron in the Tetragrammaton. And I'm going to show that here in just a second. But it's, you know, tied, there you go. Lucifer's 28. There's the 28. 14 is the box. Pandora's 28. So what do you think's running Pandora's box? Well, Lucifer's got a big say in that. He's the light bringer, though. So we have the sun in there as well. You got Venus in there because Pandora is obviously giving you lots of love. Maybe love that you don't like. And then you're going to get old St. Nick. Nickel, which is tied to the number five, which again, when you go back to the five, it's tied to Leo and the ego. And the box reducing down to that five tied to Saturn's magic square, which is Saturn Satan. And is Lucifer Saturn? Is he tied to Saturn? These are all questions that I ponder because there's so, once you get deep down the rabbit hole, there's so many options and it can get confusing. Which is why I use all these layers to, to really get a, a, a deeper look at this kind of stuff. So here's that scripture right here, right from the King James Version. And again, it doesn't matter which one you use. They're all going to point to the same thing. And this, you know, when you use alchemy, this is going to lead to radon because the dawn is the same as the word morning. And the radon is tied to radiation. And that's what weakens the nations from an alchemical presentation or, or expression. But, I mean, it's tied to the sun, the nickel, old St. Nick, devil's copper. You know, this stuff is so heavy right here. Just not reading it from like, oh, it's the devil coming down and it's Satan controlling me. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think Satan and Lucifer are the same character. Not in the ideas of the constructs of those ideas. But let's now get into, uh, let's get into Pandora, the alternate spelling now that we just went through Pandora itself and how it's tied to Lucifer and the box and, but here's the alternate spelling right here. Her other name, which is in the British Museum on this Kylix is called Anazadora or Anizadora, however you pronounce it. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, who cares? But look at what it says, look at what it means. She who sends up gifts. <laughs> what do you think the gifts are? Yeah, it's your sinning. It's your energy. It's your sinning. It's your love. It's all your emotions playing out through pie, playing out through your love and fear emotions. That's what it means. It's turning lead into gold. And when you do the spelling of it right here, because this is Pandora right here. Well, when you do it from this right here, the alternate spelling, look at what number it is. 
It's the 103. And just going right back to numerology, here it is, remembering that the full alphabet in Chaldean is 103. It's Pandora's box, where we speak all our spells from. And it's tied to the element rhodium. And rhodium is 45, and that's because if you go here and you type in Pandora's box, you're going to get 45. So you can see how we just we just got to use Chaldean. That's it. And we tie it to alchemy. It's tied to the Greeks. 103 is the 27th prime number. Chaldean is 27. When you speak straight out the words Chaldean. And this is called isotope 103. I know it's 102.906, but in science, they're going to round up. And it's the 103 isotope, and you get the RH factor, 45. The number 45 is going to add up to the number 9. And when you take the 45 and you bring it into Saturn's magic square, which is right here, when you add up all these digits, it's going to give you the number 45. So Saturn's magic square is Pandora's box, but Saturn runs time. We only have so much time. Time is 14, box is 14. I mean, it's all right there but it's rhodium. And I had done a decode <clears throat> on the, uh, where is it? The architect of the universe decoded, one of my most watched. Thanks everybody for supporting this. But I broke down the square and the circles and the triangles and the shapes that perhaps fit inside the Taurus fields. But here is the box. It's tied to rhodium, which if you study this, it's the rose that gives the bees honey. Tied to the Rosicrucians. Think they knew a thing or two? I think so, but there it is, the 45. And there's just so many ways we can go with this right here. But let's get now into the last topic. <laughs> the last time, if you weren't Florida already, folks, this one, man, this one really kind of brought a lot of things to the light for me. Uh, the narration, how this reality works, this simulation. Let's now, what, what rules it? What runs the box? I mean, we've already posed that question a few times. Is it Saturn? Is it the sun? Is it the moon? You know, well, let's let's break down Pandora and let's do one of my favorites, which I don't use a lot. And it's something I discovered, something I've created. It's what I've called alchemology. And for those of you that are new, alchemology is just taking numerology and then matching it up with the elements on the periodic table, the outcomes of these each numbers. P is number eight. So it's the element oxygen, okay, which is 21% of the air we breathe. Nitrogen's the other one right there. So the two elements of the air we breathe is inside Pandora. Of course, it has to be in the box. And then you get hydrogen and helium, which is what the sun is primarily made up of, is in there as well. You got the number four with the box, but this is alchemology. And then we just go to the trusty calculator and we add them up. And you're going to get the number 56.038. And then we get into, I, please check out my 56 decoded. I showed that we're living in a simulation and Hollywood does their best at telling you it's lights, camera, action. That's what they say before they shoot the movie. Lights, camera, action. It's well known in Hollywood and it's the number 56. How very fitting <laughs> that it's tied to Pandora. The alchemology of Pandora means the movie. We're in, you're in a freaking movie. Pandora's box means the movie, which means the simulation. That's what this means. That's what this is telling us. And so I decided to look at on the calendar, I do this often, I don't show a lot of this, but I like to look and see like what day of the year represents the number 56. 56 tied to lights, camera, action, tied to the alchemology of Pandora is February 25th. And 25 is tied to the element manganese and it's tied to the magnet and it's very magnet. It's just all telling us how we get used for our energetic currency. But it's February 25th, and then I like to put that up against the cards of illumination because I want to know what card rules that day. Well, lo and behold, it's not just any card. It's the king of clubs card, the king of the air, the king of the cosmos's mind. This represents air, clubs. And this is the 26th card in the deck, card 26. And if I go right back up to... The scripture in the Old Testament, the only one that mentions Lucifer's name, it's chapter 14, verses 12. And when you add up 14 and 12, pretty simple math, it's going to add up to the number 26. 26. 
and the lights camera action found from the alchemology of Pandora right again going back to Lucifer so what's running Pandora's box who is Pandora what's running the, it's, it's the simulation and is the tetra grammaton is that just Lucifer well the Old Testament says it is because the Greek said that the, old, the tetragrammaton is, is the G-O-D the God of the Bible and the 26th element is iron we already showed the iron and when you do the numerology of king of clubs you're going to get the number 43 and that goes right back to the 14th prime number which goes right back to the box which ties in somehow some way into saturn's magic square how about that look at the connections on what i'm showing you here just using the chaldean tied to the cards prime numbers pure mathematics and then some magic and the Gregorian calendar they're all in bed together all in cahoots but I think this is very crystal clear of perhaps giving us a very good idea of what's running the box of course it is a king and the king sit in the middle all the 13s 13 26 39 and 52 and what about the counterpart to the king of clubs the tarot the great tarot it's the king of wands which is from the king of clubs and it's the 36th card in the deck and just still you know, just the 36 alone i'm going to come back to that but look at what king of wands is 45 what is pandora's box 45 45 is pandora's box so what's running pandora's box well obviously the king of clubs has a major stake in it and the king of wands is the king of clubs and this number 36 is really important because when you go to numerology and you type in the word operating as in operating system which is a 56 lights camera action look at what i'm showing you lights camera action found from the alchemology of pandora is 56 which is the operating system so it's telling you pandora's box is the operating system and the system is operated by the number 36 that's what it's telling you here very crystal clear and obviously the king of wands has a major stake in all this jesus christ equals 36. the words jesus christ equals 36. jesus was known as the king of the jews is jesus running the lights camera action and you know lucifer the light bringer is lucifer and jesus one and the same or is it just the two fish, Jesus and Thomas down here, playing out your spirit and your ego? Good cop, bad cop, antagonist, protagonist, superhero, villain. Is that what we're... There's duality down here for sure. But this is so clear, folks, this information with Pandora's box. So what really... What's ruling over it? Well, I feel like these two cards have a major say in this pandora's box now i showed you the king clubs now why am i showing you the nine because you see if you go to uh we go back to numerology and i just want to be very clear with all of you so pandora's box is 45 and when you go to the tarot we find the 45th card there it is right there it's the nine of cups and the nine of cups is found from the nine of hearts the nine of hearts came first so we can now see and you know nine means endings and completions this is tied to prometheus the titan which is otherwise known as helios the sun god which is tied to the tetragrammaton aton a10 is the sun god thank you jordan maxwell but here it is it's the king clubs nine of hearts and you know remember saturn's magic square is the numbers one through nine and there it is and one through nine is 45 and i just showed the 45 being the nine of cups it's the nine of hearts so when we bring these two elements to match these cards to give us another outlook 26 is iron and nine is fluorine which has the number 18 as its weight i'm going to show you that in a minute here but when you take iron and fluorine and you bring them together and add it up 55.935 and 18 
0.998 and you add it up, you're going to get 74 point dot, dot, dot. It's the wolf. It goes back to tungsten and the wolf. Tungsten and the wolf is tied to the sun and the patterns of the sun. W is the 23rd letter. And that's tied to the moon as well. The moon and the sun are the anode and cathode, if you will. The two pillars, Boaz and Yachin, sun and moon. Magnetic and electric. That's the universe that we live in and we feed the wolf. And this is another aspect to show all of us how this works. And then the last slide I have for this right here is the 269. Because you see, when you take the 26 and the 9 and you bring them together, you get 269. And it's not just any number. It's the freaking 57th prime number. And then we go right back to alchemy again and we get old Saint Nick. We get devils, copper. 57. You can't miss this stuff right here when you get the eyes to see it. Okay. So Lucifer has a big stake in all this and the Tetragrammaton has a big stake in all of this. Jesus Christ has a big stake in all of this. And then we get to this element right here that has the weight of 269. This has a big say in it because it's Hassium. Its weight is 269. The number is 108. Jesus Christ equals 18. And the logo they use, the icon that the Royal Society of Chemistry used is the coat of arms for the uh, country, the city of uh, Hesse or Hesse in Germany, which is tied to Germanium. The 72 angels and demons fit in there, tied to duality, but it's the freaking dragon, folks. The great dragon was hurled down into the box. And the, and the dragon means currency, the S wave tied to the sun, tied to the moon, tied to earth, and feed the wolf. I mean, this is all what this is coming down to here. When you really bring it into a detailed consensus here, it's just all tied to Lucifer, Jesus, and the yod heh vah -Heh. They're all And Yaldabaoth's in here as well. They're all tied together. So that's going to lead me into Pandora's Box Decoded Part 2. I'm going to be coming out with this one. Let's see what kind of response I get. But I already have Part 2 pretty much done, written out on my notepad. I just got to actually create the slides. But I'm actually going to be going into the square. I'm going to be... Because this is to how I feel, you know, you properly do uh, using some of these ciphers. The square, measuring the box... So we're going to get into this 2185 and that number seven. The number seven is the fourth prime number. That leads to 74 and the wolf. And so part two is going to be using the square cipher. And wait till I show you the magnificence of this source code. It is going to blow your mind with this Pandora's box decoded part two that I have coming out. And just to start off, I have one slide to give you a little sneak peek of what this part two is going to entail. That's right, it's gonna entail the crucifixion. It's gonna entail Jesus Christ himself, the superstar, and how he's tied to the box, how he's tied to the moon, the story. And let me narrate this for all of you, just for those of you that still think that Jesus may be the sun, which he may be, right? But the moon has some say in it. Maybe this moon is a burnt out sun. We just don't know, but look at the connections to Jesus Christ and the moon. Okay, so we have Christ is 18, Jesus is 18, cross is 18, same cipher. And then we get to this element right here, fluorine, which is going to tie into this card right here because this is the ninth card, fluorine. There it is right there. Okay, so Jesus is in there as well as Lucifer and the Tetragrammaton. And, but this has a lot to say about pandora's box part two coming out oh man showing you the square cipher wait till i show you this stuff but what's very fascinating is is that in the tarot the 18th card is the moon card the moon and the moon you ain't gonna get burnt from the moon when you go outside on a full moon but in the sun on a hot day when it's 100 degrees plus plus shoo, you can get burned really quick and it causes radiation. And radiation is part of radon, which is tied to Lucifer. But nonetheless, this moon, is a, there's a big giveaway in the card, and it's the little crab right there. Let me zoom in on that. Just so you can see, there's the crab coming out of the water. Well, the reason why this, is, this little animal here is, uh, is, is on this card is because, you see, it's tied to cancer. 
cancers known as the crab. I know this maybe doesn't look like a crab, but it's, you know, I mean, I think it's the representation of that. Maybe they just didn't give the crab as a dead giveaway, but here's the symbol of cancer. Cancer is the fourth zodiac sign. Number four. Four is the box. Each of these uh, each of these squares have four sides to them. This is the box. Pandora's box all unfolded, obviously, right here. It's unfolded. This is what it looks like when you unfold it. This is the cross, obviously. So the Christ represents the box, which is Pandora's box, which is tied to cancer because cancer is the fourth zodiac sign. And the moon is the, for those of you that know astrology, what runs cancer? The freaking moon is the Lord of the fourth zodiac house. It's the moon that rules over cancer. And the moon, many know it's got the rabbit inside of it. That's why, you know, Neo was told to follow the white rabbit. It's tied to the moon. It's tied to the moon. And then in the Chinese, the fourth zodiac sign of the Chinese is the rabbit. And there's the connecting point. So the rabbit, knock, knock, Neo, follow the white rabbit. Number four is tied to cancer, which is number four. And that's why Jesus always points to the heart in a lot of these illustrations, because it's the heart-shaped box. Nirvana had a song that came out called the heart-shaped box right there. You, you can't miss this, ladies and gentlemen. You can't miss this. And when I come out with this part two, I'm going to show you how mankind's being used, the people that discovered these elements and how they're all part of this Pandora's box and using the square cipher and pure math and alchemy. It will be beyond a shadow of a doubt that we live inside of a predestined script. It's all part of the story. And that's it. Just enjoy the ride, folks, because things are not what you think they are. Things are not, and I mean, one last slide here. I mean, here's the cross inside the Zodiac wheel. This is the as above chart. Those of you that are astrology fans, there's the as above chart. It puts Aries at the rising sign position and then Taurus goes up, not down. If you go to the so below, the typical chart that we look at, Taurus goes to the bottom, but not in the as above. The mirror of the so below chart is the as above and that's Taurus going up and that puts Cancer at the top. That puts the moon at the top. And at the bottom where the feet are at, this is Capricorn which is ruled by Saturn, Saturn. And that means that the as above is saying that what's running the dance floor, which is Pandora's box is Capricorn. And these points that the cross connects to are the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And the cardinal signs are the initiates. They initiate the start of a new season. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And when you add one, this is sign one, sign four, sign seven, sign 10, you're going to get the number 22. And 22 is tied to titanium, which is Saturn's moon, Titan which is perhaps where all of these ideas and stories come from, making up Pandora's box. Woo, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for sticking with me. If you made it this far, the end of this presentation, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. This one was a lot of fun. It was a very eye-opening for me, as I'm sure it was for many of you. I showed a lot of things that I feel that are groundbreaking. I'm not saying that because I'm here to brag or boast. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of how this reality works. A lot of you great decoders are embedded into this decode because I see a lot of things from you great decoders. I pick up things from all you great decoders. So keep decoding. Keep decoding you. Keep decoding this reality. Figuring out how this reality works. And we'll finally get to the bottom of it and perhaps have some absolutes on the machinations of this reality. So what is it you saw during this presentation? Keep your comments coming in the comment section below. But as I say, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan for Decode Your Reality. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.